What's up guys? Today I have a special video. I'm joined by Raven and Rhaegar. Rhaegar who's actively trying to make a move on me. And in this video we're going to break down what are all the things that cause a girl to flick. So before this, Raven and I heavily brainstormed and we just analyzed all her past interactions for the past few years and what are all the behaviors that a guy would do that would cause her to either stop talking to him, ghost or flake, and not show up on the date. <laughs> Getting right into it. So the first category we got is ghosting, followed up by the unsolicited dick pic. Can you elaborate on that? Your most regular. It gets really frustrating when you're talking to someone and you say like good morning and good night to them every single day. You ask how they're doing and after like maybe a week or even a few days, you slowly start distancing yourself until it's practically nothing and then boom, you're ghost and we're completely clueless as to why. Like, it seemed everything was perfect and you're saying all these great things and that we click and this and that and then all of a sudden you're gone. Like, where, where did you go? And it's annoying. And then all of a sudden you think you can come back maybe a week or two later and start talking to us again. It's not gonna happen, I'm sorry. So yeah, so basically, so it's the irony here is that a guy would get ghosted because he ghosted on you earlier. Right. It's almost like, like. How can you expect someone to give you attention if you won't give them attention? Yeah. How often? How often would you say that happens? For me, pretty often. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Pretty girls can be ghosted as well. So. Words of wisdom, Rhaegar. Can pretty dogs be ghosted as well? Rhaegar, actually, also, I'm his third owner. All right, so we got the ghosting and unsolicited dick pics, and then the second part of this is you said all quite often the guys will try to get back in with a dick pic. Yes, that is such a turn off and really disrespectful. Um, like if you disappear on someone, clearly you are showing that they weren't worth your time or effort. And what makes you think that after time passes by, they've already moved on from you and probably started talking to someone else or they're just focusing on themselves. It's really such a turn off to look at your phone and you see a message from them hoping it's going to be like hey i'm so sorry about how i was before you know let me make it up to you no instead it's a picture of you and your big bathroom juicy cock with a fucking not even big sometimes <laughs> small it's like juicy a fucking cock shrimp and you're just like why did i even waste my time with you <laughs> in the first place like i was a blessing so that's it's such a turn off. Yeah. Right, and just to clarify, you're not anti-dick pic. You're anti-dick pic at the wrong time. Right. So you're not opposed to it. If I'm into you, oh, please send it to me. It's like teasing me and it's like sending me an offering, like please take me, have me. But if we are not in good terms or you ghosted me, that is not how you get my attention again. Mm -hmm. And you find that quite often guys send the dick pics at the wrong time. Like they send a dick pic like, Rhaegar, chill out. They send the dick pic like right after they've ghosted you or when the interaction's on a negative note exactly. instead of when the interaction's on a positive note. Right. So the big takeaway is dick pics should be reserved for cementing the moment, building, building the interaction, not getting back, sliding, sliding back in. <laughs> Rhaegar is the most distracting creature ever. All right, the second thing on the list is entitled. So can you elaborate on that one? Um, when... Like, there's one thing to be confident. It's another thing to be entitled, where, like, you have a good career and you're attractive, you're fit, that's great. Great, awesome qualities. Women look for that all the time. But if you're going to shove that in our face and constantly be like, oh, I have this, this, and this car, you should come out with me, come to me. Like, women normally like it when you go to them first. Like, offer to take them out. And it's one thing if we tell you we would rather be in a more comfortable setting at home, but it's another when you're demanding them to go out of their way to go see them. Um, or like just throwing in their face all the time, I have this much money, I don't really need you, I just want you to come see me. Like we, we don't wanna hear that. Um, there, there are ways to flaunt what you have without sounding like such a freaking imbecile. Right, low-key bragging versus obnoxious bragging. Right. Um, what, what made you? So, what made you, for example, come out, come out to uh, my romantic balcony versus like what? Uh, let's get a little personal with it. What, what, like, what was, what did I do differently? Um, 
you weren't an asshole, <laughs> to put it that way. You were a personal, you're very patient, um, which is a huge thing for girls. You don't make me feel rushed. You let me come to you. Um, you're very funny. You have an awesome location. You had a really interesting job. I've never heard of this before. So I was super curious about that as well. Um, Let's not forget Rhaegar. I think he's waiting for the, for the name job. He <laughs> and Rhaegar was definitely a gorgeous dog. And usually guys with very beautiful dogs, it's easy to attract women to you. Because the first thing we want to do is say, oh my God, your dog is so gorgeous. What's his name? Yeah, if Rhaegar doesn't like a girl, it's, it gives me the definite like heebie-jeebies about, uh, about... Big red flag. Yeah, yeah, that's a big red flag. Because Rhaegar likes everyone. So if Rhaegar doesn't like someone, fuck that person. Uh, I think another big part of that was that uh, pushiness, right? Like I wasn't really pushy. So not at all. I was like trying to get you out and then the Corona thing happened. And then, but like, I just, it was more of like a gentle persuasion versus like a, right. Like a hard, like you let me know that you're still interested, right, right. but you're not up my ass about it. Basically. Right. Not in that sense. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. So next thing on the list, we got the, uh, the, uh, entertaining so this one was interesting for me uh because i actually did not think this happens often so entertaining female attention so can you elaborate on that one right, get your ass off I this thing when you start talking to someone you think it's going well and usually with um online dating nowadays people ask you for your social media because they want to make sure you are who you say you are there's so much catfishing going on out there it's it's disgusting i think that point needs to be repeated so this is like there's a lot of guys who might be not a lot but some guys who might be watching this who are anti-social media and for the record i really don't like dicking around social media that much either like i fucking hate snapchat and all that shit but i do think in 2020 nowadays you do need some form of social media otherwise girls just assume you're catfish like i think that's like a there you go what the fuck are you doing sit down buddy <laughs> he is going crazy he's this video is not about him so he's getting like a little riled up <laughs> but um so so entertaining female attention it's upsetting when you meet someone online and they ask for your social media and you're of course going to start playing spy and detective you want to know who they are where they're from who their friends are what they like because usually people post a lot of things that they like on their social media um where they've been and traveled mm. do you do um, that with me yes <laughs> I, like if you look me up you just think that i'm really into huskies working out and travel <laughs> which like, is awesome like the three things <laughs> um and you're gorgeous, but you're I digress. <laughs> you're gorgeous. <laughs> so when you start seeing on these pictures and going through the comments, it's okay if you see that there are girls and they're like, oh, like cheering you on and seeing that you're doing well and like, oh, remember this one time. It's another to see like, oh, I can't wait to see you in a few weeks. So I hope you'll get to show me around and oh, you're so hot and then to see you responding to it and flirting back. So basically when it's like in your face. So the, the, the what you kind of mentioned earlier, which I thought was interesting, is you said that it's not so much whether the guy's a player or not, it's about whether like it's in your face and you're constantly reminded of that. Right, that's irritating. Like it's you, one thing to be confident, it's another thing to just be like entertaining all these women that you're not even interested in. Right, but it's also like when it's in your face. Mm -hmm. It's just because then you don't feel special. No, I don't. Yeah. It, it takes that spark away. I'm a very uh, jealous and possessive kind of lover. Like, if I like somebody, I'll give it plenty of time to develop. But if I see that you're entertaining somebody else, I'm not going to be interested anymore. Granted, in the back of my mind, in the beginning of a relationship, I understand that people are probably talking to somebody else and weighing out their options. That's cool. Don't let me know about it or find out. I mean, chances are the girls are doing the same thing. But the moment I feel that whoever you're speaking with sees that you're talking to someone else, it's over. Rhaegar, are you gonna tell on me? Uh-oh. Rhaegar is a traitor, so it can't be trusted to. So you're good. Rhaegar? Rhaegar, <laughs> Rhaegar. You, you got something to say, buddy? You can get him with chicken. All right, so the next one we got <laughs> is independency. So this goes into uh, when you were talking about the guy that can't take care of himself. I think yes. this one is huge. It's a really big deal for girls. We like to be taken care of. Um, some girls like to be spoiled, but
but in modern day, a lot of girls will say that they want to do 50-50. They like to be taken care of and given gifts and stuff, but they also like to be able to be their own woman and take care of themselves while the men don't need them either. We want to make sure that you have either a good career or you're showing that you're ambitious enough to try and get that career that you want. Mm -hmm. We don't want you begging us for money all the time. I understand that times are hard and you might need to be there for somebody. That's one thing. Um, But if it's consistent or we can tell that you're a mama's boy or a grandma's boy or whoever living off of your family's money instead of your own earnings, that's a turnoff. What you say, part of like large part of that just comes down to whether the guy's a loser or not. Like, like, because all those all those behaviors, like for example, like having a dead end job. Right. Yeah, not, not to sound mean to anyone who's in that situation, because I've also had like really shitty jobs in my life when I was younger. Um, I've had pretty much every shitty job known to man. But uh, it comes down to whether the guy's like that's gonna what he's gonna do his whole life, right? Or like that, that's a temporary thing that he's doing right now while he's pursuing something else. Or to show if he has drive or not. Yeah. It's really important to have drive in society because you're either gonna sink or swim, and we want to make sure that you're gonna swim like a motherfucker with us. You want to pick a winner. Yes. You don't want to pick a loser. That's just natural selection yeah i agree with that that's always how it's been we always are going to look for the person who's going to give us the best offspring take care of us fight for us protect us well said well said uh yeah this is something that i've talked about in quite a few videos i think that like i think a big issue i see in the community is that a lot of dudes are like super fucking broke and again there's nothing wrong with being broke at a certain point in your life if you're like in college or trying to get your business going but like if you're like in your 40s or 30s and you're broke that's just not good. Like again, like not a good look. It's just not a good look. Like not even so much for the money aspect, just so much that like you can't do shit aspect. Like having no money means also a lack of freedom. Right. Unfortunately. It means you can't take them out, you can't spoil them, you can't go and make yourself look good with like barber cuts and pampering for yourself. And that's important too. Yeah, I th- just to clarify, because you keep using that word spoil, like, I think that you're not getting in, like, the way that sugar babies use that word, like, spoil, like, oh, daddy, spoil me. Oh, you're, no. Yeah, because that's a little, you're, you mean it more of, like, a half fun type of way. Yes. Because I know you, but, like, people don't know you. No, so no. I know which way you meant it, but, yeah, just to clarify that. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, next one, we got neediness. Wait, what? Neediness. Neediness, yeah. Um, it's... To hold a long conversation, that's really cool. If you can keep a conversation going, especially for like hours on end, that's super special and it's rare. Nowadays, it's hard to get someone to talk with you on the phone. Texting is a lot harder because you get distracted. You have things that you gotta do during the day and that's understandable. It's kind of weird when you continuously hit us up and we're not responding. Um, or even if we're gone at work for maybe just a few hours and you're blowing our phone up like, hey, hey, what are you doing? I miss you. And you haven't even met yet. Like, calm down. I understand you might have a connection um, through looking through pictures and just talking, getting to know each other. Sometimes people have an instant connection like that. But if you haven't met yet, there's a fine line between obsessing and just letting someone know that you're still interested. How often does that happen where you you, 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 meet, you meet a guy online, you're like, yeah, you know, this guy might be cool, I'm, I'm interested in him, and then you legitimately can't respond to him because you're busy with something like, right. like you're rollerblading or like you're, uh, you're at work or whatever, and then the guy blows you up and then you lose attraction. That, yeah, that happens very easily. Yeah. Um, like for example, I'll be at work and I don't touch my phone when I'm at work, I am always busy using my hands and I get in trouble if I'm talking. So it freaks me out when I get off of work and there's 10 different messages and two missed calls from the same person. I think you're hurt or something and you need help or there's an emergency. And then I open it and I find out. Is your pussy hurt? Cause I'm gonna help it with my cock. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I, I find out like, it's just crazy messages of someone who's never met me before. That, hey, what are you doing? What are you up to? You're so beautiful. I miss you. That creeps us out. Yeah, for sure. So fortunately, just as we were about to wrap up the video cut out, but I did want to shoot this conclusion to help you guys better understand what she was getting at in every single one of her points. So to help you better interpret the information that you just received. So the first thing we kind of talked about really comes down to inconsistency. So it's not that 
you know, you can, you always have to be texting the girls. That's not really the message here. The message is that you should not be inconsistent. You should not ghost on a girl for two weeks and then try to weasel your way in with a dick pic, right? That's the wrong approach. So you want to, you know, if you've been gone for a while, you generally want to build the vibe back up again before you get into sexualizing. The second point is again, guys always get confused. Should I send dick pics? Should I not send dick pics? It's really simple. If the girl asks for it, then you send a dick pic. If she doesn't ask for it, then you don't send a dick pic. It's not that girls don't like dick pics, they just don't like unsolicited dick pics. And this literally goes for every single girl who I've ever talked to. So again, if she doesn't ask for it, then you don't send it to her. Um, the third point, so when she was talking about going to see them, I wanna just clarify here. So this is what she would like ideally to happen, but it doesn't mean that's what she's gonna respond to or that's gonna work the best you know, with other guys. So. What she was kind of getting at, I think more has to do with pushiness. What she doesn't like is when a guy is like, hey, come over tonight, come over, come over, come over, come on, do it, do it. When a guy's like pushing her, right? Because that really lowers his perceived value in her mind and that just kind of pushes her away instead of gets her to come to him. What she likes, what she responds to well with me is, you know, I kind of established a high level perceived value through a good profile and through a good text game and through showing personality and all the things I talk about in my other videos. And then I invited her over like, hey, do you want to come have an awesome evening with me? We're just going to have a much, you know, better vibe to it than come over, come over, come over. So I think that just wanted to clarify that because going to a girl's place or not going to a girl, but meeting a girl near her place with bad logistics for you, while that may be an easier way to get the date, it's going to make it much harder to get the close. So you do want to have logistics going in your favor, you know, before you go on a date. Next point was comes down to bragging and trying to impress. So this is just an improper way of trying to DHV, display higher value. So if you're bragging, if you're like, hey, I have a Ferrari, yeah, I got this Ferrari, blah, 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 that's gonna come off really low value. Now, if the girl stumbles on your social media and she sees in the background a picture of a Ferrari and it seems clear that you're driving it without showing it off, that's gonna have a completely different feel to it. So yeah, you wanna be implicitly showing her that you're a cool guy without actually telling her that. And this may seem like a sole difference, but it's an extremely important one because when you're bragging, when you're trying to show off, that comes off very, very low value. Uh, the next point comes down to posting dumb shit on social media. So kind of related to the previous point. Like you don't want to be just, con like a real player doesn't need to constantly remind people that he's a player. He doesn't need to constantly post pictures. Yeah, check out this chick, check out that chick. Like that kind of comes off low value as well. A real player lives a high value lifestyle and has become apparent from his personality, for, you know, from the pics he sees, it doesn't have to be explicitly him and a girl, that he does you know, do cool shit and gets laid a lot. It's kind of like you know, when a girl always sees me traveling and having a dog, they just assume that I probably get laid a lot, especially because that's how I present myself. They don't actually need to see the picture of me with like two girls next to me to know that I get pussy. And if you're trying to be really explicit about it, like if a girl sees that you're trying hard and you're always like showing off, you know, girls in the background, it's kind of like a slap to their face. And what she was getting at is that she doesn't like that. So again, you want to be a little bit more implicit about the fact that you're a player. Uh, next one comes down to being a loser. So this is a common thing I see in the comments. Girls want you to be a millionaire girl. You need to make a lot of money. No, they just don't want you to be a loser. And if you are a loser, you should hide it really, really well and work hard on not being a loser. They just don't want a guy who just does nothing all day, has no passion, no drive, isn't going anywhere in their life. Even if you're not making money, like it, but if you're passionate about something and you're going places in life, that's gonna have a completely you know, better feel to it than a guy who's stuck in a dead end job. And the last point, again, cannot be overstated enough is being needy. Girls hate it when a guy's needy and he's just blowing up their phone. Hey, what are you doing tonight? What's going on? What's going on? Like, you do not want to be needy. Now, it's good to be persistent. It's good to, you know, after a few days, if she doesn't respond, to double text her, to kind of follow up. But that's completely different than being needy. And I'll have a video coming out on this that you guys can check out as well. All right. Hopefully, you guys found this video valuable. And if you did, show me some love by smashing the like button, hitting the subscribe button, clicking the bell for notifications. And of course, if you want to learn how to get girls like this and, you know, plenty of other girls, then make sure to check out our free ultimate introductory guide to getting laid online. It's a 30-page PDF that has a lot of value. So we're going to post a link to that in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And until next time.